What's going on guys, it's Unknown Player here and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to defeat the third boss in the King's Fall Raid. These are the two daughters of Oryx, so Ir Anuk and Ir Halak, and this is the last set of bosses before Oryx himself. If you're stuck on the first boss, the War Priest, or the second boss, Golgroth, then I've made really short and to the point guide videos on exactly how to defeat them and the mechanics involved, so I'll link those two videos down in the description for you guys to watch. But in this video we've been taking a look at the two bosses, Ir Anuk and Ir Halak, and exactly how to kill the daughters of Oryx. So give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful and subscribe for more videos and we're going to get into this boss encounter. I think it's safe to say this is the easiest boss fight out of the first three. It's definitely very quick and it simply involves jumping, a little bit of timing. So there are two wizards you need to kill and they're both invincible inside bubble shields right there and you have 60 seconds before one of their hymns they start singing will kill you. They take it in turns to sing hymns which wipes and kills you and your entire team. And you need to grab the relic in the sky and the person that is torn between mentions needs to be the one to grab it to prevent their him and to be able to protect yourself from it. You'll know who is torn because their screen goes all crazy black and white and that person needs to be doing the jumping puzzle. And they need to jump from the platform to get the relic and to spawn the platforms one person needs to step on each of the four plates around the room. So that's one torn person jumping, four people on plates and one person clearing ads that spawn. And the four plate people need to pick a plate and call it their plate, you need to call it by their plate. That makes it easier to call out and communicate with others whose plate you need to stand on in more order. And you can also number them if that works for you as well. But whatever works to communicate with your team, what plate you're talking about and the order for you to jump on them. So there's a certain order for this to work. You need to step on the plates one by one and it needs to be in a counterclockwise direction, one over from the platform that the relic is currently over. It sounds a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna demonstrate it here. So the relic is over Oki's platform, so that means one over counterclockwise is my platform. So my platform is a starting one and this changes each time. So of course it's different, but this time the order starts at my platform. So I need to jump on mine first and more console is torn. So here's a jumper. He needs to also hop on with me. So me and more console are going to hop on my plate first. Then he starts to jump on the platforms that spawn for him. And then you go round counterclockwise around the room until finally Oki should be the last one on his plate. So Bife hops on his plate. Destiny Overwatch hops on his plate. And then finally Oki hops on his plate. And that's the order you activate them round counterclockwise like I've said. And the relic should be over the last one to jump on their plate. Meanwhile, more console is jumping around the room. Pretty simple stuff. I'll show you my perspective of what it looks like when I get to do it later on. And it's really simple. You simply wait for the spark to move on and you keep going around the room, jumping from platform to platform. Then the jump part needs to grab the relic and you jump into the wizard's shield that isn't doing the hymn. The one that isn't waving their arms and the one that isn't covered in flames. You go to that wizard, you go right up to it and you hold square or X and you steal her bubble. And then everyone run over to the front spawn door. You will group together in this bubble and shoot the wizards to do damage. And void bows, of course, weapons of light are going to help for bonus damage. And people should use rockets, snipers and scout rifles. Anything that's accurate to do damage and isn't going to be missing shots. And then you repeat this step again and again. But for the other wizard who isn't seeing this time, you need to always be shooting the wizard that isn't seeing. If you shoot the one that is, it's going to kill you. But you shoot the wizard that isn't seeing and you get that second one weak. And then you go back to the first one you got weak, you shoot her. And then once again, the fourth time for the second wizard you got weak and you kill her. And that's it simply done. If you can do a lot of damage and if you're high enough level, you can simply do them in just two sessions, one each. But otherwise, take as much health as you can, but leave them just alive for the first two and use another two, finish them both off. So now that they're both dead, you can grab your loot and you prepare for the final stage of the entire King's Fall raid. This is the Oryx boss fight and I'll have a video up on that very, very soon. It's a crazy fight. So like I've said, if you need any guides on any boss fights in this raid, I have them on my channel. So stick around and look for any guides that you might need. I've also got guides on chess in the Dreadnought and exotics and loads more on the way. So subscribe so you don't miss out on my future content. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have found it helpful. I don't know how you get on in the comment section below. I'd be interested to see how you guys are getting on with this raid and how you're enjoying it. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.